last night. Um, my understanding by uh, attorney uh, Jamie is that we do not have to have a resolution to terminate. It only has to have a consensus. The only resolution or vote that has to be legally done is uh, to enter into the contract, but uh, council members and also uh, our attorney thought that it would be better to have a vote and a resolution to terminate said contract. The termination of the contract, I don't really, I don't like that term. Termination is not what we're, I mean, we're not really trying to terminate and get rid of this. We are terminating it to start a new contract. I have not heard any, anyone. I am not in favor of leaving the world war without any fire or ambulance. Uh, I don't, I've never heard that from anyone that that's a hard vote. The termination is considered a legal term in these types of contracts. We did have a meeting last night. We are down with the fire, uh, the fire um, contract, the 28 e agreement. We're down to three points. Uh, one, I believe, really is cleared up by state law. Um, our attorney uh, has said that it's written in state code. No matter if we have the terminology in the contract or not, it's still state law and it's still binding. Uh, they're not happy with that and would like to talk to their attorney about that. That's basically the wording that the city as the entity uh, has final say in contract. The rural board would like to be partnerships 50-50 and have a say with how operations are done. I explained last night, if we were 50-50 with uh, expenditures, I mean, if, if there was a capital where we could split that, then I, you know, that's a different story. We just talked about becoming a partnership. Um, so that is one of the concerns. The second uh, concern is about uh, the splitting of the property. Uh, if there was a rest, if there was a dissolution and we did terminate and we could not come to agreement, how would uh, equipment be um, uh, split up? And the third one, I can't remember, Jose, I didn't bring my notes so, with me, you remember? The third one was um, uh, having an exhibit based on uh, budget discussions, the amount that would be transferred to reserve. Uh, so, for example, right now, um, for the fire district, they give 17000 and the City of West Liberty gives 17000 to go in the fire reserve for the future purchase of equipment. Um, and same with the ambulance, it's 20000 for each entity right now to go into the reserve for the future purchase of equipment. So, two, two of the three items, I think, can be cleared up in a a matter of days. I mean, I don't, I don't see where those are sticking points. Uh, one is because of state law, and the other is just the amount and having an exhibit of how much we actually uh, contribute uh, into that. Uh, the third item, which uh, about a month ago, I believe I asked uh, Chief Sickles and uh, Assistant Chief Christensen to uh, work on. Uh, equipment to where if there was ever a uh, termination, uh, if we dissolve as a, as a unit, where would equipment go? You know, who gives what? Yeah, I, and uh, last night, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that has not really been started uh, upon. I, I was not getting any indication that work on that was started upon. Um, my only, uh, and I'll let Jose talk since he's a uh, council member and, and I don't have a vote, but uh, my, <laughs> I mean, I want the people that actually are, are you know, voting uh, to give their thing. But my, my concerning point and what I thought, I was under the uh, confusion that uh, we could work on the contract and 
with, with just roll over until we work on that. Jimmy had indicated last night, our council said that is not correct. That if we do not terminate, then the contract would then roll over and we would have to wait until next April. There is a provision that we could both agree to terminate before that time and enter into a new contract. But if one or, or, or the other parties did not agree to that, then we would have to wait until next April. So that's kind of uh, where we're at. The only sticking point I see in what I, what I think could bog down the process where termination may be a proper thing is, is at least one of the board members uh, for the fire rule basically has said they would not sign off on any agreement until they see a clean audit from the city, which because of our audit issue with the state and with our current auditor wanting to do a two-year audit, correct? Mm -hmm. That we may be waiting for possibly a, up to two years to get a clean bill of audit. And if they're going to say, well, we won't, we won't sign anything until we see a clean audit. The case is we don't owe them money. We're not financially in ruins. Nobody's uh, stole anything, you know, there's no embezzling going on in the city. The hang up is the comments that are written on the audit, which 90% of those comments get written upon by 90% of the cities in Iowa. But that's kind of where we're getting stuck at. So that's kind of my background. Jose, would you like to? Yes, yeah, so sure. <clears throat> The sticky point is exactly what he just pointed out. There is a member of maybe two of the board of the rural uh, districts that uh, any, will not accept any response from us with regard to the audit. They wanted something to do. That is not going to happen. We had, as I said, Yes, we are making progress in the administration of the city, but we are not perfect. We are not going to deliver to the one plus one plus two. And if this member of the board doesn't change that attitude, uh, one of the propositions was, oh, we, let's have another 90 days of discussion. I say, no, we won't. Let's have 90 days from here to the end of June, the first of July. For you guys to come to the table and say, or not, and if you decide not to come to the uh, agreement with you, the 28 year agreement, they have a lot of explanations to do to their constituents. Our job is to put a, a meaningful, acceptable agreement in front of them. If they don't take it, we can not force it. And we, we have give, given, uh, like, there was a 30-day termination clause or a breach of contract clause in there. And I threw out, and they were good with it, which talked about a 90-day. Um, instead of, they wanted a full year. Uh, <laughs> I mean, breach of contracts, you don't give the other party that breaches the contracts a year. But we did offer 90 days, and they thought that was acceptable. So, I mean, it's not that this, that us as uh, members representing the city are not trying to work with the rural board. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think what, what we're into is, is we could have this drag out for several, uh, uh, a year or two, um, from now, if we would not serve the termination. Last night, I was under the understanding from city staff that the city council was still in consensus to terminate the April or, term, or to deliver a termination letter by April 1. So uh, instead of uh, those gentlemen who I respect and thank for their time to leave and then get served a letter today, and be kind of blindsided, I didn't think that was very respectful. So I did explain to them uh, that uh, I believe that was still the council's consensus and that I would be delivering a letter uh, of termination upon them 
so that at least they have that knowledge before they left last night. I thought that was the proper and, and right and respectful thing to do. I think we have been being very flexible when it comes to the demands. And 90 days having all the technology that we have now to have among them, the, the conversation they need to have is plenty of time from here until June 30th to August 1st. They are asking for 90 days more. In, in my opinion, and I am, I think I speak also for Robin. We are not, we're not going to do that. So, so talking about that 90 days, they did ask, and I did ask me last night to put that on the agenda. Uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie's on here. Yes, Jamie has, uh, <laughs> is working on an amendment that if the council does go ahead and and say that if in June 30th comes and there's not a contract, there could be an amendment voted on by the council to extend that another third or excuse me another 90 days. So I I, I guess I would uh, just express to the council to give that a lot of thought. Uh, I understand Councilmember Rocks and Councilmember Zacharias's. Uh, frustrations and all the work that they put in, and I respect their uh, their decisions and, and and their perspective on that. But I, I would ask the council just to seriously consider uh, that agenda item that would come up on uh, April six. Well, here's my my speak. Uh, you know, we keep giving more and more time, and they want something that we can't give them. What well, would 90 more days give them and we still can't give it to them? Why are we keep wanting to go 90 days and then 90 days? To me, that makes no sense to me. So, you know, because they're not, I think it's just a stalling tactic. They just want to keep asking for more and more time. I'm sorry, but what are they wanting? They're, they're just stalling. I agree 100%. So, there's, so they're, they're, their uh, reasoning, I guess I'll, I'll put it as a timely term, their reasoning is that they're going to be, that everyone that's in part of the process, the work board, will be out in the fields and be working farm work. They haven't been out in the fields for the last month or two. So, so, and, and you know, and if, I mean, you know, and if the council on April 6th, if the council, you know, entertains that, that motion, I, you know, I think that's a that's a hard deadline if if we went down that road. But well, that's totally up to. Well, one of the things that I have heard is that they want to try to stall it until there's a new vote and get more people on this council. If they want to get to get them away. That's what I. Can. That's supposed to be. Now, Jimmy, I have a question for you. If the public safety committee doesn't make a recommendation to go to a full council. With this uh, 90 day extension, you shouldn't go from there, right? Mr. Mr. Zachariah or Councilmember Zacharias question, did you hear that in full, Jamie? Uh, he's asking if the Public Safety Committee needs to make a recommendation for that particular amendment to come before the council. Yes, and it was my understanding they made that recommendation last night. No, no, no. no. Okay. I, I asked to have it. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought you, I thought they agreed. So I, okay. My point is this is a procedural move from the Public Safety Committee not to take this uh, position, uh, uh, the 90 days extension to the full city council. I think we need to have. Uh, an open mind on the other side of the agreement, showing that at some point or another, they have to realize that we are making our best effort to run the city the best possible way and not to start giving us this misgivings and you know, sidekicks saying you are not doing your job right. Yeah, I would encourage you to follow your procedures. Um, as far as recommendations flowing through a committee, although I don't think it would be possible to prevent a council member from putting forth a proposal in an open session if it's been added to the agenda. 
regardless of whether it's been through committee or not. So uh, I would encourage you all to just follow your standard practice and procedure. That's the best methodology to ensure that you've uh, done everything to the best of your abilities. If it's appropriate that you refer items to committee and wait for a committee recommendation, I would encourage you to follow that, but know that I don't believe any council member would be prevented from putting forth a, a proposal during a, a meeting. Okay. So from council members that have not been part of the uh, process with the meetings and the public safety committee, is there any questions about kind of uh, what's been going on any concerns, questions, or anything that you have of uh, council member Zach Rice or myself? So are we looking at only, when are we looking for them to have an answer by? Right, we were saying, so by July 1, is that what we're giving them until now? If, if, we serve the, if we serve the termination letter, uh, it's it's more tomorrow, days, right? it would be until the end of the contract, which is June 3rd. June 3rd, okay. The, to clarify for you, uh, sir, this notice by the contract, basically what you're electing to do is not automatically renew it for another term starting July 1. So you're serving notice that you're not renewing, you're terminating instead. And so it would go to the end of the current term, which would be June 30th at midnight. And then at that point, in the meantime, we would have a new agreement drafted. We would, we would hope to have. That's, and that, then that's the goal. That would take over July 1. Yes. That has always been our goal is to, to uh, firm up a 2080 agreement that was within the state statutes and by all the laws. Right. Right. It has never been to terminate services. I was going to say that in, in no way we ever had in mind a complete termination of the Okay. Diane, do you have any questions? No, I'm just thinking it through. Okay. Well, I guess, ha, is the committee making a recommendation to extend for 90 days? Uh, I have not talked to Council Member Rock this morning. Uh, communication that I had received last night would indicate, and I don't want to speak for him, but I'm going to explain what I know. His communication from last night was that he would probably not be in favor of a 90 day extension, and I'll let Council Member Zacharias speak for himself. I am on the same page. Uh, this is the communication I got from Robbie Rock last night. 90 days is more than enough time to get these things done. We have changed everything they have asked for to a piece. They are stuck on the island, BS, and say they won't sign it. More than the reason to send the notice of termination. Jose, you said it very well, no matter what answer we give them, they won't change their view. So at this point, then we have from now until June 30th to resolve this. Yes, and at any time between now and June 30th, we can place a amendment to extend it, I believe. Is that what you had uh, uh, relayed last night, Jamie? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, you, you would uh, offer to amend the uh, current agreement to extend its expiration from June 30th to you know some other date. Um, I should point out, and there's a little bit of precedent for this in Muscatine County, but it's not impossible that you could at some future date before June 30th rescind your notice of termination and allow the contract to roll over for another year. Um, if any of you recall the issues that the Muscatine County Board of Supervisors had related to their participation in the mental health um, special districts that are created for that, they submitted a notice to terminate. 
they weren't allowed into the other group they wanted to get into, so they rescinded their notice. The original group tried to fight that rescission, and the courts decided, no, you can take back your notice of rescission at any time. So it, it would not be unheard of if you decide that at some point you need to cancel your termination notice. I believe you could do that, and it would be binding. It would allow the agreement to renew again July 1 and carry over to June of 2022. And again, there would be a new notice deadline of uh, by April 1 if you were going to terminate in 2022. So this may not be a final uh, fatal blow to this agreement. You, you have some options if it truly becomes necessary. But we're still not in compliance with the current 28E. That is correct, ma'am. The 2080 agreements that we have in place with both entities do not meet the statutory compliance of the 2080 code. Okay. Mr. Mayor or Council Member Zacharias, I don't know if you wanted to mention, um, so the trustee that asked, what's the sense of urgency? Um, because when we shared about the letter, um, then they became wanting to know what was our sense of urgency. Um, and, and, and Council Member Zacharias answered to him, you know, that there has never been an intent to not provide service. And, um, you know, and the intent is intent. Um, of course, we couldn't, was to make sure that we became in compliance with the with the statutory uh, regulations, um, it wasn't an intent to not have a, a relationship um, that is strict. And again, part of our conversation was also is that it was our understanding that um, through our meetings, the rural trustees were communicating that they were um, not happy with transactions and, and things. And so again, we stated, you know, it was our understanding that you, you as well wanted to come to an agreement um, to, to clean up this or clarify things. Was that correct? I mean, that was, that is, yeah. That is correct. I think after the mayor's intervention yesterday, letting them know that we are not partners. We are not equal partners. Mm -hmm. That they are far from being 50-50. You know, that is going to change, as I call, it's going to change their mind. But the rest is here. OK, any other questions? I know we have a discussion. I have not asked for approval of the agenda because we have not got to the two resolutions. Uh, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. Sure. Motion and a second. Second, Zacharias. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any further discussion of the approval of these two items on the special agenda? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Aye. Three, three, one. Opposing the agenda, is that correct? Four. Diane, are you for or against? No, I'm, I'm with you. Okay, I, it, the delay, so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't real time or delay, so thank you, Diane. <laughs> Passes 4 0. I just wanted to make sure. Yep, I saw it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I sent Lee an email. Uh, it's important to uh, have this meeting comply with various. We lost time, Jamie. Sorry, are you, am I back? Yes. Okay, so the open meetings rules do allow for a meeting to be convened with less than the 24 hours notice that is standard, but it's important that the meeting minutes reflect, and I'll read you specifically the requirements so you can figure out what needs to be in your record, mm -hmm. um, that uh, the meeting minutes must reflect that there is good cause uh, for the meeting not to comply with those requirements. Uh, you need to discuss the impossibility or impracticality of such good cause. Uh, 
and justify the departure from the normal requirements. And that needs to be stated in the minute. So in today's instance, you need to have something that reflects uh, the fact that at a previous council meeting, you had discussion and a consensus without resolution or uh, without a resolution and you needed a resolution to act and you have a deadline that's imposed by the contract that necessitated uh, the council meeting be convened today. And I sent that to Lee. So I just want to make sure that you understand uh, because I think we can reasonably anticipate that the this actual meeting itself may be attacked at some point and uh, we want to be sure we've done everything we can to comply. So meetings with less than 24 hours notice are allowed uh, and uh, we just have to be sure that we are very specific about why it was necessary to do it in this manner. Yes, and I, and I believe last night that the uh, rural board wanted the, the council to meet and at least in our short discussion that we had last night, we did not think that was possible uh, until I was notified this morning that the council members uh, were requesting that. And I believe that we had talked to you, Jane, is that correct? Yes, I just wanted to make sure that the, the, the statutory requirement is that the minutes have to reflect all of this so that it's very clear to anyone who was uh, not present why the meeting was convened with less than 24 hours notice. Okay, thank you, Jamie. Okay, in front of us is resolution 2021-0331-09 pursuant to paragraph 11 of the 2080 agreement effective July 1, 2007, between the City of West Liberty and the West Liberty Rural Fire District to approve notice to terminate the existing agreement effective June 30th, 2021, with the intent of this, with the intent the city will enter into a new 28E agreement with the fire district. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Motion, second. Is there any further discussion? I, I know we did discussion prior to give some base and some, some outlines, but I want to make sure since this is an important topic and maybe you know something that may be scrutinized that if there is- well, we just need to let the rural people know, right? We, we, will, we will, will still be going out until we get that June 20th, right? I mean, they just need to know that all of a sudden, you know, the fire department and the is going to come to them, but they are going to go with them. I mean, I want that to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're sure they're people gonna, are going to, they're going to all of a sudden, it's going to fly out there that we're no longer going to go to them. That is not true. Correct. Right. What's right. going to happen is the insurance company, the insurance, insurance right. those yeah. properties would take notice. Well, right. Yeah. Right. I just want that to be clear because I do not want it to fall back on the city saying, Right. Jamie, um, in the letter that we've already have drafted, um, is that something I should add as uh, Council Member Smith it, that we make the statement that um, our the 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 services will continue um, until the June thirtieth. I, I didn't know if I should just add something in there as Council Member Smith is just trying to be detailed and clear that if we send a termination today, that doesn't mean um, the department would stop responding today. I think that's fine. It sounds like he's proposing an amendment to the resolution to have some language included in the letter and you can certainly revise and update the letter uh, with, that, with that point of clarity. Uh, I, as I understood it, the letter stated it was just a you know a non renewal that would terminate June thirtieth. But if if there's any confusion, we're talking about emergency services. I see no reason not to be as clear as possible so people understand and have no fear. Okay. Thank you. And is it written in the current contract about uh, the thirty days we have to give notice or anything? Is that why? We're doing it for today to be done June 30th. Um, them. So in your so uh, with the attachment to this, yeah, um, uh, we're referring to paragraph 11, which um, that which communicates how the yep. before April 1st. Yes, we have to know before April 1st. 
but the contract's still good until January. June, yeah. June 30, right. Any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, I'm going to go with you, Diane, first with roll call, just because I want to make sure that the yes. time is right. Okay, yes? Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Zacharias? Council Member McFerrin? Yes. Caps is 4 0. We're on to resolution 2021 1031 10, and this is uh, basically the same uh, 2080 agreement, but it actually has to do with the West Liberty Rural Ambulance Board to approve notice to terminate the existing agreement with the intent to enter into a new agreement with the Ambulance Board. And can we do that same with that letter also? Mm -hmm. Stating that we still do. Yes. Yes. Any further? Oh, let's. Is there a motion? Motion. motion. There's a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. Mr. Mayor, um, just a real quick, Jamie, I did give information as to why we provided an Exhibit A. Um, that was, I, I attached an Exhibit A because that was the best that I could do today to find any documentation or community or minutes about what we believe the time frame to be on the ambulance agreement. Um, and so I attached the service agreement that was signed, but it had no date, a memo that was dated 2011, where the agreement was put before council for review, um, and then a draft agreement, and it had a written date on it of 225, and then uh, a memo again in, April of 26, talking about the agreement. And then the council minutes, April 17th and the first, um, referring to the agreement and then transfers. Um, after that, I reviewed another year's worth of minutes and documents and was not able to come across any other documentation within that time frame of this agreement being signed. Yeah, I think it, just as long as the council members understand, no one has the ability to put their hands on an ambulance agreement that's been signed by all sides, except for the one that doesn't contain any dates. It doesn't tell us when it was signed. It doesn't tell us when it will be effective. Uh, it just tells us that it exists and everyone agreed to it and it will renew every three years. Uh, so we have unfortunately no idea and Lee did her best to see if we could figure out when it was signed uh not to to hold you out there Mr. Mayor but you're the one who signed on behalf of the ambulance board but we don't have any dates for it for anything so we don't know so we're operating under we're giving the best information we have which is we will assume that this agreement you know is is valid and uh we're giving notice that we're not going to renew it we don't know when it really started, so we don't know when it ends, but that's we believe it's going to try and coincide with the July 1 start. So there's more ambiguity in this uh, than we would like, but unless someone produces something better for us, that's all we've got. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Council Member Smith? Yes. Council Member Councilmember Zacharias? Yes. Councilmember Barron? Yes. Councilmember Brunner? Yes. Passes 4 0. I appreciate you all taking time out of your uh, day, especially since this was a quick notice. Uh, I would uh, entertain a, a motion to adjourn. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Anybody vote? Passes 4 0. We are adjourned.